Welcome to another episode of Air Guns and Pesting Channel. And here we have cornfields and crosshairs. Howdy, howdy. And we are out on the range. We got targets set out at one here at 15 yards, 30 yards. There's 15, 30, 50. 75 and 100. Shooting the capybara. And we are shooting. He's shooting the capybara today. Got Doing it. some accuracy testing with the capybara. Shooting the JSB Diabolos 18 grains. All right, let's, let's get it on. Going to zero it in at 30. And here is Cornfields and Crosshairs doing his thing with the Capybara, caliber gun Capybara in 2 2 caliber. Do a little zoom in on that baby. Look at that. All right, what you got? Sweet. You one, sweet. You got one dot for 75, is what you say, on your tape? Uh, take a look at that tape. I don't know what's on there because I'm not really sure. 75-1, one mil dot. That's what I got on there, so. Let's give it a rip and see. Let's see how accurate it was so far, but. No wind at target current. Oh, I'm starting to figure this a minute here. Oh, I'm getting a little bit. Okay. Be right back. All right. Going for the second target. Far right, second from the top. Far right, second from the top. Here we go. Oof. Oh, wow. Number two. Got a little bit of wind, a little bit of wind. Oof, tack driving. Pull back, rack it like a brocock. Target's moving a little bit from the wind. Eight seventy nine, like she said. Rack another one here. Eight hundred seventy nine. Hmm. One thing I do notice here on the bench, this way you have to rack this thing back, like a BT sixty five or a Brocock before the side lever or any of the mother guns like that. It does tend to move the gun on the on the table. This you gotta readjust between shots because Well the table is not very stable too as well so no it's just, tables. Yeah it's a light shooting table. Yeah right, yeah, right. yeah yeah just that the hammer spring you know is set where it's set and it gets firmer This is driving one ragged hole. At 30 yards? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, one ragged hole at 30 yards. All right. So we're at, okay, one ragged hole at 30 yards. Mm -hmm. Let's try for uh, 15 yards. Uh, might as well get it doped up. 15? 15. Start mm. at 15. Let's see if it'll uh, change your point of impact. All right, let's hold under here. Oh, you want me to hold on crosshairs? Or you want me to hold under for 15? Well, check it out. See where, where the impact is. All right, all right, all right. Just we'll move up to 50 yards. Adjust some parallax here. There we go. All right, should we start with the bottom? Okay. Start with the bottom. Let me rack it back here. Oh, see, yeah, it can't hit the gun. 
There we go. All right. Can't, can't. Corey, can't, can't. 875. What was the impact? Low. Low, 6 o'clock. Let me see. I'm holding center, so that could have been me in a trigger pull. Try holding under. Okay, I'll hold under. One mil dot, I'll hold under. Center target. 877. Miss completely. Hold yep. Over. Hold over. I shouldn't have to hold over for going. Well, uh, you don't. Well, it's shooting uh, low right now, so try it. I'll shoot. I'm going to try center again. I'll try center one more time, and if it's the same, then I will hold over, but I shouldn't have to for closer. Still the same spot. Mm hmm. Try it. I wonder if the trigger pull, I'll try it, but I wonder if the trigger pull, because it, and it's making the gun go like this, go down. I don't know. Because I'm pulling back, you know? Yeah. It might be doing yeah. that. Well. Hold over. Was that one? Mm hmm. You might have to go one and a half. That's going to make a big difference. You got to target 15 yards. Trying to hit a sparrow or something, you know. One and a half. Man, I hit hard. Real hard. One and a half. There you go. I'll make a notation of that. 15 yards, one and a half. <laughs> okay, now, Corey, uh, take it out to 50 yards. All right, we'll take her out to 50. You learned something today. Can't be Some parallax adjustment here. Okay, here we go. 50 yards. Pushing the capybara up to 50. Upper right hand corner. Level's good. Or upper left hand, excuse me, upper left hand corner. Right below the red square. In okay. the middle of the square, right, below then, the red square. Okay, then try half. I'm gonna have to hold a half. How's this cabin bar shooting for you there so far? Good. Good. My only complaint is I feel right now mm -hmm. is I wish this bolt lever was longer so I could get two fingers behind it. Because this one finger, is, it's making my finger, and I don't have weak fingers. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. And, and you know, that, that's it kind of takes yeah. the joy out yeah. of it. Right, that's, that's, that's one thing uh, I noticed that with the cappy bar, that the uh, cocking lever could be a little bit longer yeah it could be longer for more leverage on it you right. know because right. your hammer spring has to be tight if you're wanting to shoot these velocities you know what i'm saying you should rest that on there and adjust it make it it'll make it a lot more uh, stereo platform if you put it up how can i move can i move this over yeah no i mean no not move it over you can adjust this well yeah but i need to i'm, I'm turning the gun oh yeah well just slide it over we're going I didn't want to take it yeah, off yeah, the, yeah, slide it over. I just didn't want it's gonna make it a more steadier uh, platform for you yeah you I didn't I didn't want to throw off the uh, oh, radar it. over here the radar all right here we go I Let's, think we can pretty much say that the regulator this caliber gun regulator is uh, doing a heck of a job so far it's very consistent 
Okay, we got 11 shots with a spread of 12 and a deviation of 3.0. Average uh, 884. Okay, JSBs, man. Eight, excuse me, 877 at 24.3 foot pounds of energy using the 18 grainers. Wow. 23 okay. foot pounds, that's where we're at. Yeah. And this is a 10 shots, of course. Right there. I'll just shoot one more and then I'm going to disconnect. There's no reason to keep. Ooh, wind. There it is. I mean, it's, it's pretty consistent there. And mm -hmm. The spread hasn't changed and near has a deviation. So mm -hmm. we're done with the, uh, we're Wait. done with the, the FX crony for now. Okay. I got to write this down because I'm going to forget. Okay, one, okay, 20, 50 is 0.5. I get that's right. Mm -hmm. 0.5 up there, correct. On the doping, dope tape I got on the top of that gun, so mm -hmm. it's correct. Mm -hmm. So far, okay. How are we looking so far? Looking, on target? Oh, yeah, you're on target. Okay, it's well, all all right. Then let's stretch this capybara all the way out to let's see what we can do at 75. All right. I'll take one more shot right here just to see, make sure that was the wind blowing that. Because if it, it's hitting... Well, okay, right now it's calm. Mm -hmm. But I can see in the top of you know, tree tops are kind of... Yep. On? Yep. Oh, yeah, it's on. All right, now we're stretching out to 75. And so we that's can the see first... the wind flags. Blowing to the right. Blowing to the right there. So what, we got a little birdie sticker on that metal, round metal target. And looks like we got um, looking up the winds. Yeah, let me look okay. up the wind real quick because I'll be able to get a greater. Uh, we're coming, yeah, it's coming directly from the west to the east, east to west, running at about eight miles an hour, uh, continuous with 21 mile an hour gusts. Okay, there you have it. There's that. 75 yards, 18 grain JSB in the wind. Oh, look at that. That thing is deader than a doornail right now, that that flag on 75. Going for the little black bird there. And here is Cornfields and Crosshairs doing his thing with the Capybara, caliber gun Capybara and two caliber. All right, what you got mixed? One, you got one dot for 75 is what you say on your tape? Uh, take a look at that tape. I don't yep. know what's on there because I'm not really sure. So 75-1, one, one mil dot. That's what I got on there, so. Let's give it a rip and see. Let's see how accurate it was so far, but. No wind at target current. Oh, starting to pick up just a minute here. Oh, we're getting a little bit. Okay. Be right back. Nope. Not at 75? Nope. Too low. Okay. Then try, uh, try go two. Yep. Two holdover. You got pellets in it, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. I got to drive back there and get my ramp. I'll be right back. Okay. I got hands in the air, bro. Okay, we are here at the uh, 15 yard Spin. target. 
And as you can see, he had a crosshairs center here and it ended up hitting low. He ended up going one and a half mil dots to hit the center. Now let's go back down here to the 30 yard. 30 yard, second target on the far right, second from the top. There it is. A little bit of side to side play. That's me, it's all human error. 30 yards. Now we walk down to the 50 yard. First shot was holding center here, first shot. And then the three following, human error, once again, me, table. Pretty much a little over an inch. In the wind, folks, in the wind. In the wind. 75. See here, you can see they were they were stacking. You know, it's just those two points, and just for me, human error once again. Well, that's uh, that's something there. You know, that's getting a little bit more comfortable with the trigger. You know, uh, realigning everything. I mean, you can see. All right wind but you know point of point of aim is the same and the point of impact is the same and that's moa sub you know well it's moa at 75 which is and now we go to the 100 yard because that's what everybody wants to know how's it going to shoot at 100 yards right right and like we spoke of you know this is a, a, a day with a little bit of wind some gusts you know, eight mile an hour wind, what did I say, 20, 20 gusts? Yeah. See here now what we have. Real conditions here, folks. Yeah, like now it's dead. <laughs> totally dead flag. Here you have all along the same line, you know, so I'm aiming, but the wind is going back and forth down here. And that's what's put me out. Now I have a grouping right here, which is probably would be if I'm holding steady and the wind's not influencing. And it's, here's, a, here's your consistent point of impact right here. So that MOA? Oh, yeah. All right, folks. We got, how many do you think you got right in there? Looks like three or four. Looks like one, two, three, and maybe four. See, like All right, so we got four right there. MOA. With obviously the other two on the left and the two on the right is uh, due to the wind. Mm -hmm. But this is real world conditions. So this would be a size of about a sparrow, by the way. Right. Yes. This. This would be your, your dove, your pigeon, medium sized birds, even a fat starling. You know, stuff like that. Hundred yards, folks. You can nail it, nail a bird with that gun. This is a dead bird all day. Okay. And, here's, yeah, and we do the zoom here. Well, that's, that's how far we are. Yeah, can't even uh, zoom it all the way in, but there you have it. We are 100 yards out that's the with lane. the Capybara. That's the lane. Today's now we're gonna lane. do, we're gonna finish up the review here and uh, give our opinions about the gun. We're going to talk about it, the pluses and minuses on the Capybara and the overall experience. What's and we'll wrap it up. Air See you in a little bit. Guns and uh, pesting channel. So here mm. she is. Caliper gun, Capybara, chambered in uh, 2 2 caliber. Uh, let me uh, read up some specs to you about this particular uh, gun. 
It is uh, considered a bull pup, uh, multi shot. Cocking system, they call it a slider. And this bolt handle here, you pull it back, let go, and it, it uh, automatically advances to the next round on the 18 round magazine. You get two of these that come with the gun. And this cocking lever can be switched from right to left, which is a nice added touch for those, you know, that want to yeah. switch to the bolt handle from either side. So, it is wood. I, I'm not sure what type of wood it is, folks. Uh, you know, I could guess, but I don't want to take a guess at it. But whatever it is, it is uh, I don't know if it's popular or not. You know, it's hard to tell. But it, it does have uh, some nice stippling on the pistol grip and a little bit on the fore, uh, forearm there. Got some lines here, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. It, it just Weight reduction, maybe? Yeah, maybe weight reduction. And of course, there's a thumb hole stock, which I like, you know, you can, you know, you can just basically hand, hand hold it, you know, as you're going through, if you're hunting out in the woods or wherever you're at. Uh, it does come with the cheek rest. Mm wooden cheek rest. Now, let's go over uh, the manometer, of course, is up front and the business end. This right here, this piece here is uh, aftermarket. I got this from uh, J JB uh, 3D printing. It's for Picatinny rail if you want to put a, uh, you know, your bipod in the front. Manometer obviously in the front. Right there is your, where you put your field probe in. What else we got going on here with this particular gun? Okay, uh, it does fill the 300 bar, mm -hmm. which is a added plus. Barrel is 480 nice. millimeters or 18.9 inches long. It's a choke 12 groove, 17.7 uh, twists. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Air capacity on the cylinder is 200 cc. It does have a weaver rail up here which is nice. It does have adjustable trigger. We're gonna test out the trigger here with the Lyman uh, gauge I have. Uh, got a manual sa safety on the right side. Where is that baby at? Uh, right there. There's your button there for your manual safety. Overall length is 29 and a half inches long. Uh, it said the weight is 7.3 pounds unscoped. Now, Obviously, it's going to be scope dependent, and I'm going to weigh it with my scale here with the scope so you get an idea what the actual weight is of the gun. Uh, it's not actually under. Okay, come on. Nine pounds, 15 ounces. Field outfitted, more or less. There you have it, nine pounds, 15 ounces. Now, what's neat about this is on the back here, when you, well, right now it's uh, in the open mode because you had to remove the magazine. So it'll show a little red indicator at the end of the hammer spring. And it lets you know that the gun is cocked. So that was a nice edit feature. It is fully shrouded. Got the square shroud on it. Quiet, in my opinion. Very quiet. The gun, well, I mean, I like it. I mean, I, I mean that's the reason why I end up getting one because it's uh, unique. Mm -hmm. And very, very unique. When I was pesting with it, I actually uh, enjoyed uh, shooting this gun because uh, I don't know, just uh, I don't know, just. A unique piece. What do you think about this? I mean, it looks different, you know. And it considers a bull pup, and I just don't know if I consider it a bull pup or an actual uh, carbine, like a semi pup. Semi pup. I, I don't know. I mean, it's just a unique thing uh, for the gun. Now, trigger wise, let's uh, let's see where the trigger's at. Okay, it's cocked, so. Let's give it a trigger pull test here. Very short.
first stage, very short, followed by the second stage. Didn't register, sorry folks. Got to pull it back, try it again. One pound, two ounces mm. is the actual uh, pull weight on this gun. Okay, now let's talk about the gun in general. All right, let's do that. Now, the one thing I found about this uh, capybara when I first uh, received it is, uh, oh, by the way, before I forget, the gun has a one year warranty and Air Guns of Arizona has uh, picked up caliber gun. So if you want to get one, get a caliper gun, whether it's a capybara or the tactical or any other line of cricket guns or caliber guns they have, check out Air Guns of Arizona. They're going to be the main distributors of uh, caliber gun. Just so you folks know. Now, uh, there's one thing that I want to discuss that got me a little frustrated with uh, capybara when I first uh, received it. And by the way, I received this gun along with the Argus 45 back in November. And I just now got around to, I apologize, just, you know, getting around to uh, actually doing a real review on the caliper, or it's a uh, capybara. So better late than never. Mm -hmm. So magazines. How many do you get with the gun? Oh, I already said that earlier, it was a uh, two. Two. Two magazines. Two. So, I did not know that when you insert the pellets, I was uh, just put them on the top of the surface flush. And every now and then, it, it would not cycle through. And when it did, it was not very accurate. The gun wasn't very accurate. And I just now uh, was talking with, uh, with Corey about that and he was having the same issues as well, gun cycling. What he had found out, you have to push the pellets, you know, not all the way through, but under the, you know, the, what do you call this here? The, the countersink, more or less? You gotta countersink the pellets. That's, mm -hmm. that's I guess, the best way to put, put mm -hmm. it. Countersink the pellets so it's not riding on the, on the top surface. Oh, flush. Below flush. Right, because there's an arm that catches these uh, cogs on the magazine itself. And if the pellet isn't, if the pellet's in the way, that's gonna interfere with mm -hmm. it cycling the magazine. Mm -hmm. So, for you that are, people out there that are interested in getting a, a capybara, please make sure that you push the pellets, you know, countersink the pellets so that it'll cycle every time. Mm -hmm. And that was the problem I was having. Uh, every now and then it would cycle and then not cycle. Mm -hmm. And the gun would kind of jam up. Mm -hmm. Can we show them the, the detail? On yes, go, go ahead. I'll yeah. show you a quick up close here. Oh, trip and fall and die. Uh, <laughs> hi guys, how's it going, Air Gunners? Um, so right here on the surface, I could start to see, and I don't know if I can bring that to light or not. I'm gonna give this my best shot. It would start to fold over and at first it was lead and then you started to see a little bit of the machined material start to kind of get marred up on here so just keep an eye out for that if on your magazines on all of your caliber gun magazines for that matter because they're like all kind of the same this one just has a little bit more to it uh to hold it into the uh, back of the gun there you go shot flawlessly otherwise after that always cycled every time you pull the bolt back and let it go forward it would cycle the magazine flawlessly after you countersink those pellets very true so uh, there you have it folks yeah mind if I talk a little bit about the gun my experience go ahead Shooting it. Corey go ahead and take over now he he went uh, we went passing last night with uh, yeah. capybara what was your uh, yeah how did it handle for you out in the field uh, so it handled great for me out in the field um, the things that I'd like to talk about to be aware of um, that I experienced while using the gun and shooting uh, multiple birds. Shot a lot of sparrows with it. Uh, shot, I only shot one starling, two pigeons. Um, 
but uh, it shot really well. And it loves the Hades, by the way. It loves the Hades. I mean, you can, it's, it's accurate as you could want it to be with the Hades So that, for this barrel, which is great. The thing I did notice out in the field is that this fore, foregrip uh, wood piece here has two screws in it that hold it. And so it's kind of like a pinch on the tube. I was moving the gun around a lot in the field, through the farm, in the barn and stuff, through the fences and stuff. And it would kind of move after a while. And you can only put so much torque on these and then that's it. So if you split it and maybe you thought of putting something, an underlayment within this foregrip of some sort, like a double-sided tape or double-sided yeah, rubber idea. tape yeah. or something like yeah. that, and then bring it back down, it might actually hold a better for you in the field if you're rough on the gun and holding it like I do sometimes with these meat hooks. Other thing is I have very big hands and stronger hands, but this short throw lever did kind of make my index finger a little bit tired after a while as I was cycling the gun because I did want to shoot it a lot, so I did cycle the gun a lot. Um, also, this is a push button on the end that locks the bolt open when you're removing the magazine. So when you pull the bolt back, you push this button in here and that holds the bolt open so that you can remove the magazine, unjam it, or whatever you may need to do. Um, the grip is awesome. It's big enough for guys with big hands like mine. I had enough room for my pinky, and so the grips on the caliber gun is awesome. The trigger um, is my second favorite caliber gun trigger. The first favorite caliber gun trigger uh, that I like first and foremost is the wider flat bladed design like on the Crickets, which I shot Ken's uh, 177 Cricket, the first gen. Um, yeah. There. All right. That was a wrap.